it's book haul time! With jazz hands, I guess. I mean, really, I should be doing a review today because uh, I'm like three behind. Uh, but I'm I'm feeling kind of brain fried, and uh, reviews require you to actually think about things, and book hauls require you to be able to say titles and authors and and hold things aloft. So book haul. First, I want to say hi to all of my new subscribers and thank you to E Lizzie Books for pimping out my eleven book reviews in four minutes video. I can't imagine you would be subscribed to me and not to her, but if for some reason you are not, I will I will link to her where the links go and you should go do that because, yeah, Liz is awesome. So yes, thank you Liz and thank you to all of you who have subscribed. It is, it is good to see you. I can't actually see you right now. I don't know why I said that. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Let's just... Oh, this is gonna be a good video. So this is an Amazon order that I got in like a week ago. I've been ordering from Amazon a lot lately just because I have a lot of gift card money tied up with them. So, um, yeah. Ah. Uh, oh, first book has a story. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the website Badass of the Week. And I don't even read it regularly, but I got linked to this one article about a woman named Julie Daubigny. And it was kind of the greatest thing I've ever read in my life. Like, oh, well, I'm just going to read you the first sentence of this article. Julie Daubigny was a 17th century bisexual French opera singer and fencing master who killed or wounded at least 10 men in life or death duels, performed nightly shows on the biggest and most highly respected opera stage in the world, and once took the holy orders just so that she could sneak into a convent and bang a nun. I'm going to go ahead and, and link you to the article down where the links go, because it only gets better from there. So naturally, I was like, oh my god, I need a biography of this woman to hold and read and cherish and keep on my bookshelf forever. But apparently none exist. Maybe my Google foo has just failed me, but I mean, I just could not find anything. And so the only thing I could find was a, a very heavily fictionalized novel about her. So I got that. It is called Mademoiselle de Maupin and it is by Theophile Gautier. Yeah, just busting out my high school French skills. No big deal. It, yeah, it really isn't a big deal. You know. This is apparently far less swashbuckling. Oh, that's a hard word to say. Swashbuckling. Yes, far less swashbuckling and much more romanticized, and according to the back is apparently a French version of As You Like It, which I have not actually read. I think that's the one with the cross-dressing and the gay panic and everybody hangs out in the woods. I'm gonna check. Uh, yes! There you go, that's that's the summary of As You Like It. Cross-dressing, gay panic, woods. That's all you need to know. I, I have no idea how racy this is gonna end up being. Cause I mean, it was published in 1835, but it's also French. Was 1835 pre or post Marquis de Sade? I'm gonna look that up. Oh, that's post de Sade. This, oh, this is probably pornographic. Oh, what else do I have besides saucy French literature? All right, next is How I Paid for College, a novel of sex, theft, friendship, and musical theater by Marc Aceto. My favorite part about this, I don't know if you can see that, is that in this little bubble here it says $9.95, and then underneath it in parentheses it says cheap, like you maybe don't understand the value of money. I think this is actually a YA novel. I've heard this is very funny and very good. The back of it makes it sound like a cross between a coming of age story and a heist story, which sounds super cool to me. So we'll see how that goes. Next up we have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark, which is huge. Yeah, this thing is like nearly 900 pages long. I have been wanting to read this like basically since it came out, so I'm very excited that I finally got a copy of it. This takes place in an alternate version of the early 1800s and is about wizards. So that should be cool. I think this was actually the first book that got slapped with the Harry Potter for Grown Ups description, so... There you go. Then we have The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. I think I first heard about this book on a podcast a really long time ago, and it was described to me thusly. Two words. Space. Jesuits. And perhaps you are the sort of person when you hear the phrase space Jesuits, you're like, that sounds weird. But when I hear the phrase space Jesuits, I'm just like, sold. I don't need to know anything else. Space Jesuits. 
let's do this. I, I don't actually know anything else about this besides Space Jesuits. And finally, we have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is not the cover I was expecting, but I totally like it better than the other cover, so I'm very excited about it. I don't know how well you can see, but it's a paperback, but it's made to look like an old leather-bound book. Super cool, right? This is actually a translated work. Uh, it was written by a Spanish author. So this takes place in Barcelona immediately following the Second World War. And it's all about this uh, antiquarian book dealer's son who finds this uh, strange book called The Shadow of the Wind. And when he looks for other things by the author, he realizes that someone is systematically destroying all of the this author's books, which sounds very mysterious and cool. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, and I believe that is everything. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye.